Hello, and welcome to part two of my AMD DX4 PC. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I prepared the PC for some MS-DOS gaming. I'll show you how I added a CD-ROM drive, a networking card, a sound card, and all of the software configuration issues that came with it. So let's get started, and I'll show you how I upgraded this gorgeous 486 PC into the perfect MS-DOS gaming machine. So let's start with the networking. We have a Maxtech NX16BT using the UK022 chip. Now during the installation of Windows 3.11 it did detect a networking card as an NE2000 compatible. But while rebooting Windows 3.11, it always hangs on this splash screen. So there's obviously something wrong with it. So when I started Windows without the networking support, I could enter Windows and enter the Windows network setup, where I could see that it was detected as the NE2000 compatible, and it has assigned an IO address and an IRQ port. So I decided to download the MS-DOS setup program so that I could set up the IRQ, IO, and DMA channels for this particular networking card. Because most of these networking cards have some kind of MS-DOS based utility or setup program allowing you to configure it. So here it has detected our board and we can set the configuration. So currently it's set in any 2000 compatibility mode and it has assigned an IO address IRQ um, which is the same as the one that we saw on Windows, so yeah, not really sure why this is not working. These applications typically also allow you to test the networking card, so I'm doing that here, and every test seems to be okay. So yeah, let's see what we can do next. So I've decided not to use the built-in Windows NE2000 compatible drivers, but I've downloaded the actual Windows 3.11 driver for this networking card. So we can install it here. It's the Maxtech NX16. So we set the interrupt that we have uh, assigned using the setup program in MS-DOS, the IO address as well. And we can uh, install the driver here. So it will ask us to reboot and let's see what we have. And what we have was exactly the same as what we had before. A hanging Windows splash screen so yeah at this point there's not really much more that I could do so I've decided to move on and go with this card instead so this came from a compact system but it is a PC net um, ISA networking card it was uh, made by AMD or the chipset at least was uh, provided by AMD and it has built-in support in Windows 3.11. So when we add an adapter and we uh, opt to detect the adapter in Windows 3.11, it will detect the networking card as an AM2100 or AM1500. So I don't know the interrupts yet, so I'm just going to assign something here uh, quite randomly, but something that I know that uh, shouldn't be uh, in use by other uh, cards. So I'm going to go ahead and configure that and install the driver, restart Windows and see where we are. So this time Windows does boot, but we are welcomed by this uh, error message uh, saying that there was an issue loading some kind of protocol on the networking side. So I decided to download the MS-DOS utility program for this particular networking card so that I could configure the various settings of the card and do some diagnostics. So I'm going to be setting the IO address DMA channel and IRQ level for this networking card. It has detected the card, so that's already good, as we can see an Ethernet address on the right top side. But let's uh, select an IO address which is uh, available, an IRQ and a DMA channel as well. I'm going to be testing the card using the built-in diagnostics. So it will do some various testing in terms of uh, seeing if the card is set up properly, check the IO addresses, DMA channels, interrupts. So all of these tests turn out to be successful, so that's already good. So now it's time to check to see what happens on the Windows side. 
and sure enough after starting windows we get a nice little welcome to windows for workgroups login screen so that en let's enter our credentials and verify the networking setup now the io address and irq settings that are set up here in windows don't really correspond to the ones that i've set up in the ms dos utilities so i'm just going to be aligning those so i have selected irq 10 the io address is okay but the dma channel was set to six so let's go ahead and configure that restart windows hopefully for a last time and see if the networking is operational and it appears that we are in business as after the splash screen we are yet again welcomed by the windows login screen so that's already a good sign it means that the uh, networking card has been detected and yeah we should be up and running here now moving on to something a little bit easier or so i thought uh, i have selected this creative sound blaster vibra 16 as a sound card uh, it dates from 1997 so it might be a tad late in terms for this pc but it was one of the few uh, creative isa sound blaster cars i still had uh, available so yeah i thought this would be a walk in the park because i know that there is very good support for these types of cards in ms dos so i went ahead and downloaded the uh, driver installation program and I, I've always had really good experiences with those. I've never really installed a Vibra 16 before. So yeah, but I was hoping that everything would go very well. So we get the welcoming screen. I'm going to be installing everything. We select the location where we want the software to go. The standard IO settings seem to be fine, no conflicts. So upon hitting enter to proceed, I got prompted with this error message, wrong base IO address. So, hmm, yeah, this was kind of confusing because all the other ones are pretty non-standard IO addresses for sound cards and yep, none of the others worked either. So I was stuck here. The setup program wouldn't continue from this point. So yeah. Was this a problem with the driver? Was it a problem with the card? I did not know. So I decided to ditch this card and opt for another creative Sound Blaster card. Again, another Vibra 16, but it was the only one that I had available that I could use. So I decided to try that one. And surprise, surprise, again, the same error. It couldn't find the networking card on any of the four provided base IO addresses. So at this point, I was pretty confident that it wasn't going to be a hardware issue because chances that these two creative fiber cards were defective are pretty slim. So I would need to look for another solution. And it turns out that instead of using the Vibra 16 drivers, all I needed to do was to install the standard Sound Blaster 16 drivers. After those were installed, everything was up and running. The sound card was initialized using the standard IO and IRQ and DMA channels and everything was working fine. So for the CD-ROM drive, I had this Mitsumi 12 speed CD-ROM drive in mind. It's a Mitsumi CD-ROM drive CRMC FX 120T uh, manufactured the date is a bit difficult to read I think 1996 so it might be a tad too new for this 486 AMD but yeah it was one of the oldest CD drives that I had so we're gonna switch the jumper to the slave mode and hook it up to our hard drive which is set up in master mode so in order to insert the CD, we need to take the front panel off so that we can access the five and a quarter inch drive bay, which is sitting at the front of the case. So we just need to unscrew this. And this is actually something I forgot to do when I was cleaning the case. So yeah, beneath it, it will be quite dirty. <laughs> And it's a bit of a pain to get a CD-ROM into this drive bay. It's very, it's a tight fit, but you know, once it's in there, just insert some screws and you should be good to go. So we just need to slide the drive bay back into place and put back the front cover. I think it fits quite nicely. It, it fits the look and feel of the system. 
and we can continue now with installing the drivers. I've hooked it up just to make sure that the drive is still working so at least we can open and close the tray which is already a good sign so let's install some CD-ROM drivers right now. Well, I found these generic CD-ROM IDE drivers online. I think they were from Gold Star, so I thought I'd give those a try. It came with this setup program, which was kind of graphical, but was obviously running on MS-DOS. But it copies all of the necessary files into a folder and will make changes to your config.sys and autoexec.bat. So here you can see the changes made to the config.sys, where it loads up the CD-ROM driver and the autoexec.bat where it executes the msc-dex executable to assign a drive letter. So I thought we would be good to go here, so I did a quick reboot. But for some reason, while loading up the driver, it said that it couldn't find any drives and it was aborting the installation. So, not knowing if the problem was related to the driver or the CD-ROM drive, I decided to look for an actual Mitsumi CD-ROM driver. So I went online and found the Mitsumi CD-ROM driver, the mtmcdai.sys. And I also changed my config.sys to load up this particular Mitsumi driver instead of the Gold Star one. So here it's loading up the IDE CD-ROM device driver and it has detected one drive. So it's a slave, IRQ14 and it has assigned an IO address. Let's see if the MSC DEX assigns a drive letter, and yes it does. So we're in business in terms of CD-ROM drive. So with all of the hardware shenanigans out of the way, it's time to start the computer and play some games. Now I recently picked up two boxed games that are very dear to me. Uh, Dragon Lore here, a great Game, one of the first games I actually bought when I was about 17 or 18. Minimum requirements 486, 33 megahertz, so it should run on this PC nicely, but we'll see about that. Released in 1994. So, yeah, really looking forward to playing this one. And another classic here is Microprose Grand Prix 2. System requirements are a bit higher on this one, 486-66 MHz, so in theory it should run on my AMD 100. But this game is notoriously known for being uh, very high in terms of requirements, so I've heard people saying that it actually doesn't run very well even on a Pentium 90, so... Kicking off the installation, as this is a pure MS-DOS game, we can launch the installer from the CD-ROM drive from a DOS environment. It's pretty basic. We select a language and you can decide if you want to install the full version of the game or a minimum version. It also does a hardware check to see if your hardware is up to par for the game. Here it detected some issues with buffers and some memory related issues, but we should be able to play the game just fine. So now it's just a matter of copying all of the game files onto the hard drive. So this takes a while, especially on a you know, kind of a low speed CD-ROM drive. But after the installation, it will continue with the sound card setup. So it can automatically detect the presence of a sound card. In this case, it has found our Sound Blaster 16 at the appropriate address. We can do a sound test. And we should be ready to play the game now. So with the installation out of the way, we can finally start the game and we're welcomed with the very 90s game intro. And we'll do a quick race. I'll select my home circuit of Belgium, Spa Francorchamps. And we can get started. So the graphics are pretty okay. It's running on, on the default uh, settings. Here we have the various camera angles of the car. Now we just have to wait for the start and we're off. So there's a lot of smoke <laughs> coming from the cars. Uh, this is all stuff that's being calculated by the CPU now. So you can see it throttling a bit, especially when there are lots of cars in sight. 
So we're going in on the first corner right now with lots of cars in front of us, behind us in the mirror. So you actually see the frame rate going down a lot. It, it's dropping lots of... It's not actually dropping frames because the, game's, the game is designed in such a way that it will attempt to show every frame that it needs to show. So it just ends up being very, very slow. And here there is a major crash, partly caused by me. So at that point, uh, I gave up on running the game with the default settings. So let's see what we can change here. I'm going to turn everything off. No textures whatsoever. Um, I think this should buy me a couple of additional frames per second. So let's see how the game runs now. So a very bad start indeed. No traction control, obviously. Uh, I have the impression that the game runs a tad faster now. Uh, you can see that the textures have disappeared, but again, as soon as there are lots of cars uh, around, it has a lot of trouble uh, rendering everything on time. So you see a lot of textures still on the cars that I don't think you can turn off, but if you don't have a lot of cars inside, the game actually is playable. It's not super fast, but as you can see here, as soon as the car gets a little bit closer, you see some uh, slowing down of the game. So here I made it to first position. As you can see, there are no cars in front of me and the game is pretty playable uh, that way. Moving on to the next game, Dragon Lore, that uh, I think will be a little bit less demanding of the CPU and the video card. Again, an MS-DOS based installation that we can run straight from the CD. I'm gonna be installing everything on the hard drive. But I hit a snag as I had some issues with the CD-ROM drive. All of a sudden I got this read error. But luckily by cleaning the CD-ROM a little bit, I was able to continue and install the game in its entirety. So here you see the 12 speed CD-ROM drive doing its magic copying all the files over to the hard drive. Now I am going to be speeding up this footage a little bit because it was very slow to copy everything, but it finally did. It found my graphics card, my sound card, my mouse, everything was good to go, but there was an issue with the memory. The low memory or the conventional memory that was available was not sufficient, so we needed to tackle that. So I decided to run uh, Microsoft MemMaker on the system to increase the free amount of conventional memory. So I remember from back in the day that this was a pretty simple process in the sense that you run MemMaker, it reboots the PC, it changes your startup files a little bit to do some memory analysis, it restarts the system for a second time, and if everything works fine, you should have more free conventional memory at your disposal. As is the case here, so we have had an increase of the conventional memory and this should be sufficient to run Dragon Lore. And indeed, another classic 90s game intro, Cryo, Mindscape. <laughs> And here we have the intro of Dragon Lore. Is yours. The day has dawned when you must claim the inheritance of the Van Wallen Birds. Now I'm not expecting a lot of issues running this game on this type of PC. This is kind of a point and click adventure style game. So there's not a lot of uh, high speed graphics that need to be rendered. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of memories playing this game when I was uh, when I was a kid. So I was very happy to get this box version uh, again. But as you can see, it runs fine on this PC. Uh, the transitions of the graphics are are very smooth. So yeah, looking forward to playing this uh, playing this game. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. For me, it was great fun to get this PC up to a level where it can play some of the MS-DOS games that I really liked. They run into some software issues, but well, we were able to fix all of them. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe or hit the notification button. 
If you have any comments, feel free to write something down and I hope to see you for a next video. Bye-bye.